Do you like home theater tours? Well, so do I. Do you like home theater tours with 24 inch, one of a kind carbon fiber subwoofers that'll shake your skin? Well, stay tuned because you made it to the right video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a home theater tour of my non-dedicated family room from which I've repurposed about half of it for a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos home theater system. I'm Barrett and this is Speca Tech. Welcome to the channel. For those that are familiar with the channel, you know that I did a home theater tour several months back. I'll link that video in the top right hand corner. But since then, I've changed so much of my system, it really does warrant a new tour. So I've changed my room around, I've updated my speakers from Klipsch to SVS. I've also updated my subwoofers to two 24 inch crazy output subwoofers. One of them is even made from real carbon fiber. So trust me, it's worth it to stick around. Before we get into this tour guys, I just wanted to let you know that anything I will be talking about in this home theater tour, I've dropped links down below if you are interested in checking them out further and for any of my components that I have done a video for before when I am talking about it I'll link a video in the top right hand corner if you guys are interested in checking it out further on my channel what do you guys say we get into this home theater tour starting with one of my most recent updates the front stage speakers so up until just over a month ago I was running three clips rp8000 f speakers for my left center and right I recently upgraded those to the SVS ultra towers and as you're about to see the SVS ultras are truly a stunning speaker in the looks department So not only do they look fantastic, they sound amazing as well. They are a unique 3.5 way design with a one inch aluminum dome tweeter, two 6.5 inch composite glass fiber mid-range drivers, which are crossed over at two different frequencies, giving you that 3.5 way design. And then of course, two eight inch woofers on the sides for bass response down to 28 Hertz. They are a great choice for two channel listening as well as for gaming and movies. If you want to see the full review and whether or not I prefer them over the Klipsch RP8000 F that they replaced, make sure you stay tuned on the channel. The review will be coming out next week. Moving on to the side surrounds, I was running the Klipsch RP502S, but I recently sold those to upgrade to the SVS Ultra surrounds in piano gloss black, but they are on back order. So right now I am just using the Numi BS5 bookshelf speakers, which I won from the Hi-Fi Summit in Q2. Yes, these Numi BS5 speakers really are inexpensive, but they actually aren't doing too bad as a side surround. If someone wanted to put together an inexpensive system, you could run seven of these with a subwoofer or two, and it would be a great little system. These little guys are front ported, so they work great having their back against the wall. They have a one inch silk dome tweeter with a waveguide and a five inch fiberglass woofer. Don't expect much bass out of them, but then again, they are only $89 a pair. I really am looking forward to the SVS Ultra surrounds once they arrive though. Before we move on to the rear surrounds, now's as good as time as any to consider subscribing. If you guys do like audio and home theater, that's what I'm all about. So if you subscribe, you might as well tick the bell icon so you'll be notified about all the big videos that I have coming. And if you guys do like home theater tours, make sure you click that like button down below. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the rear speakers. I personally like to use uh, tower speakers for my rears, but before you guys run to the comments below and tell me how bad my rear speaker placement is, I know it is less than ideal, but my philosophy is you just do the best with what you got, work with the space that you have, don't sweat the small things, enjoy your system. All right, you guys didn't come here for a philosophy lesson, let's get to the rear speakers. Before my recent speaker upgrade, I had the Klipsch RF62 twos, but for my upgrade, I chose the SVS Prime Pinnacle Towers in black ash. I chose these because I felt they would offer a closer match to the SVS Ultra Towers versus the Prime Towers. They have the same one inch aluminum dome tweeter as the SVS Ultra Towers and a five and a quarter inch composite glass fiber mid-range and three 6.5 inch bass drivers in a three-way crossover design. Make sure you stay tuned on the channel for a review of these speakers. That covers the seven channels of floor speakers. Now let's move up to the ceiling for the four height channels. So I'm still running two front height and two rear height channels and the speakers have not been changed since my last home theater tour. I'm using using the Klipsch AW650 outdoor speakers that have a built-in U-bracket, which really made them easy for mounting. I was not able to cut up the ceiling to do in-ceiling mounted speakers, so these were a great option. The AW650 is a two-way design with a one inch titanium dome tweeter with a 90 degree by 90 degree horn, and then a 6.5 inch woofer. In all honesty, these are a little overkill for height duty, but I would rather have too much than too little. The rear height channel is the Klipsch AW400. I often wanted to upgrade these speakers to AW650s to match the 
front heights, but I kept telling myself that I may transition to a different type of speaker in the future, so I keep putting that change off. The AW400 has a one inch polymer dome tweeter and a four inch woofer, which in all honesty is perfect for height duty as there's no need for them to be base capable. But as you can see, I did my best with the cabling, but I did have to run cables along my ceiling, which again, isn't ideal. I know some people, it really bugs them to see cables, but for me, it's not a huge deal. That covers all of the speakers, except for the two 24 inch subwoofers that I'm running, but we are going to get to those, so just hang tight. Now that we've covered the speakers, let's talk about the cables that feed them. In the past, it isn't something that I put a whole lot of attention into, which is cable management. Uh, it's actually something I got a little bit of flack for in my last home theater tour. So I did try to clean it up a little bit for this home theater tour. So let's talk about what I did to help make it look a little bit cleaner. As you can see here, running along the right wall, I did use a Raceway cable concealer system. This Raceway does conceal the right side surround cable, both rear speaker cables, as well as the rear subwoofer cable. For the height speakers and front speakers, I used the Vivid neoprene roll, since there was too many cables and they wouldn't fit in the Raceway style cable management system. It may not be perfect, but it does look a lot better than what it did. All of the cables meet up in the front right corner of the room, and now that we're there, we might as well talk about the racks and the components on them. So as you can see in this picture, I used to have the component racks front and center, one on either side of the center speaker. But I've since moved them to the front right hand corner and stacked them one atop the other. Currently I store some of my gaming controllers on the top of the rack. And down from there on the top shelf, I have the Panamax MR5100 power conditioner. I chose to put the power conditioner close to the top to make separating the power cables from the audio cables a little easier. As I stated before, I'm not super meticulous on my cable management, but I did try to improve it a little behind the racks compared to how it was. But as you can see, even from the front, the cables aren't entirely invisible. Continuing down on the second shelf, I have my Xbox Elite Series 2 controller recharging station on top of the Panasonic DP UB824 k Blu-ray player. I chose this Blu-ray player because it offers offers close to the same performance as the flagship UB9000 model, but for a smaller price tag. The HDR optimizer in these Panasonic units truly is a great feature. Below that, I have my Xbox One X and Xbox 360 consoles. I will be getting an Xbox Series X once all the craziness of the launch dies down. In the small shelf below that, I store some of my remotes and some wireless keyboards that I use for my Xbox and when I'm doing brew measurements. Under that is the brains of the whole system. I am still running the Denon AVRX 4400 AVR, which I chose because it did have pre-outs for running external amplification. Right now it does power my four height channels though. I most likely will be going with a pre-pro in the future, but for now I'm still happy with the Denon's performance. Speaking of amplification, under the Denon is a Tone Winner AD 5180 Linear Power Supply 5 Channel Amplifier. This amp offers great sound quality and 180 watts per channel with some truly stunning good looks. It's powering my front left, center and right speakers as well as the side surrounds. Under the Tone Winner 5180 is another Tone Winner, the AD 7300, which is a seven channel switching power supply amplifier with 300 watts per channel. That also looks pretty slick itself. Right now it is only powering my rear channels because I prefer the sound of the 5180 for my front stage and side surround because it has a slightly smoother high frequency sound that I prefer. Don't worry, I know guys, I'm not really utilizing the AD7300 very well at the moment, but let's see what the future brings. That covers the components except for the cooling. So I'm sure you noticed throughout the footage there that there were some USB thermostats. Those are the AC Infinity USB thermostats that I have controlling two AC Infinity S2 fans for the Denon AVR and for both the Tone Winner amps to help keep everything cool. I'm a firm believer that this will prolong the life of the unit. Heat is the enemy of electronics. That covers the components and I'm sure you've noticed by now that I do not have a projector and you'd be right. Perfect. I'm currently using a 75 inch Samsung Q6FN model 4K television, which offers a truly stunning picture with saturated colors and an epic gaming mode. I haven't gone with a projector for two main reasons. The first being that I'm about six and a half feet from my screen and I don't really need a bigger display. The second is that I do game on my setup quite often and the input lag on most projectors is not very good. The Q6 television has a great game mode with super low input lag and free sync which helps with screen tearing and fast motion. I do intend to go with a projector eventually, but it's just not a priority in my current space. If I had a dedicated room, I would definitely be using a projector and I do understand the massive benefits that they offer. Okay, so moving along, what good is a nice home theater if you're not comfortable sitting and watching? So that brings us to the home theater seating.
Currently I'm using the Valencia Verona leather power recliner for my seat and two Valencia Pisa chairs that are also leather and power reclining for guests or for when my kids do come join me. My wife wanted to get her own leather glider and recliner so hers is by the fireplace and was entirely her choice as she prefers a glider. Valencia does make really comfortable home theater chairs and I'm actually truly satisfied with that purchase. All right guys, one more thing before we get to those epic 24 inch subwoofers. So when we bought our home, it already did have the shelving unit surrounding the fireplace. So I thought this would be a great place to house my Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray movie collection, as well as some of my movie collectibles and memorabilia. As you can see, I have some collectibles from some of my favorite video games and movies. I'm a horror movie fan, so I have a few figures like Pennywise and Freddy Krueger. I also have a Venom bust, a Terminator chrome mug, and one of my favorites, the Predator figurines. I also couldn't resist the Baby Yoda. I had to add it to my collection. So that covers everything but the subwoofers. So let's talk about them. When I started my home theater journey, I really was looking for an extreme bass experience. So I've actually gone through quite a few subwoofers trying to get there. Uh, from Polk to Klipsch, SVS, Power Sound Audio, and all of them were great subwoofers for what they were, but they didn't really give me that extreme bass experience that I was looking for. Well, I think I've finally found it with my current subwoofers. So let's start with the absolute monster, the Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra, with a 24 inch carbon fiber driver, powered by a 4400 watt RMS and 10,400 watt peak built in plate amplifier. This subwoofer truly is insane, it hits some crazy SBL without even trying. For example, I can hit 126 dB at 11 Hz in my room and that isn't even at the max. Check the videos in the top right hand corner of this video if you would like to see more about this insane subwoofer. For a little while I was actually running the Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra and Dual Power Sound Audio TV 3612s. The TV 3612s combined had four 18 inch drivers and almost 4000 watts RMS, which I had near field behind my chairs. Very recently I sold the Dual TV 3612s and bought the uber sexy Harbottle Audio C24 L2 24 inch subwoofer with real carbon fiber veneer. The subwoofer has the same 24 inch driver and 4400 watt RMS and 10,400 watt peak amplifier that is in the Funk Audio LFE 24, but in a sealed enclosure and veneered in real carbon fiber. As good looking as a subwoofer is, it lives behind my chairs as my near field subwoofer. If you want to know how it integrates with my ported LFE 24, stay tuned on the channel, the review will be coming in the next six weeks. These subwoofers have the cleanest bass you will ever hear and have output in spades. They give me the extreme bass experience that I was longing for and they look amazing to boot. So what do you guys think about these subwoofers or my equipment in general? Leave your comments down below. If you guys are into audio and home theater, consider subscribing. That's what I'm all about. And if you do subscribe, you might as well tick that bell icon so you can be notified about all the big videos I have coming. And if this video interested you or it helped you out or you're just all around a good guy, make sure you hit that like button down below. And as always guys, stay techie.